Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Panda family. In this video, I am going to explain you MOS capacitor. Before I start with explanation, let me tell you how many things that I am going to cover in this video. First, I will be discussing about basics of MOS capacitor. Then, I will explain you how basic structure is there with MOS capacitor. After that, I will explain you few essential parameters of MOS capacitor that is useful to solve problems. Then, I will explain you how energy band diagram that is there with MOS capacitor. So, let us try to understand first how basics are there with MOS capacitor. So, when you talk about basics, at that time you should know MOS means metal oxide semiconductor, right. See, MOS capacitor that is also known as MOS diode. Here, why it is also known as MOS diode? The reason is it is two terminal device. In structure, I will show you. MOS means metal oxide semiconductor. So, there are three layers. One layer is metal layer, second is oxide layer and third one is semiconductor layer, right. This MOS capacitor that forms voltage dependent capacitor. So, based on biasing voltage, its capacitance changes, right. So, it forms voltage dependent capacitor. With respect to BJT, if you compare MOS capacitor, then MOS capacitor occupies less space. That's why this MOS capacitor that is more suitable in integrated circuits. Here, this MOS capacitor that we don't use directly in the devices, but when you fabricate MOS transistors, at that time, this MOS capacitor that is inherently present. So, these basics that should be clear to you, like there, is, there are three layers, right? Metal layer, SiO2 means oxide layer, and third is semiconductor layer. Here we are forming voltage dependent capacitor. Size of MOS capacitor that is quite lower compared to the size of BJT. And this MOS capacitor that is inherently integrated inside MOSFET or you can say MOS transistors. Right. Now I am going to explain you few more fundamentals related structure. So as I have told you, you see we are having three layers metal layer, oxide layer and p-type substrate. There can be n-type substrate as well, right. So, based on these layers on the, its name is there, metal oxide semiconductor, there are two terminals. With this metal, we are having gate terminal and with this substrate, we are having substrate terminal that is also referred as base terminal in some books, right. Now, when you talk about this metal layer, so that could be of that could be of aluminium or it could be of polysilicon. I am just coming in between. So, let me go out from here. Now, you see this metal layer, this metal layer that is that could be of metal like aluminium or it could be of polysilicon, right. Here, this oxide layer, SiO2 layer, so that is acting like a dielectric layer, right, and it forms capacitance in between gate and substrate. Its thickness is there in order of 10 nanometer to 50 nanometer. Here, when you talk about this semiconductor, here we are having p-type, there can be n-type semiconductor as well. The capacitance of MOS capacitor depends on the voltage applied at gate terminal. So, usually this substrate that we ground means voltage over here will be zero and at gate we are applying biasing voltage, right. So, Based on the applied voltage at gate, capacitance of this MOS capacitor that will change. That is how basic functioning is there. That functioning that even we will be observing in future coming videos. Right now consider here this structure that will be acting like a variable capacitance based on applied voltage over here. Right. Now I am going to explain you energy band diagram of P type substrate first. So, here first I will be discussing about how p-type substrate energy band diagram is there. I know I have explained energy band diagram of n-type and p-type semiconductor material in earlier videos, but here there are few essential definition that I would like to explain you and based on those definitions there can be questions, right. So, here I will explain you that energy band diagram in bit more details. So, here when you talk about p-type substrate, so in that you can observe here we are having valence band, 
here we are having conduction band and gap in between valence band and conduction band that is forbidden energy gap. Here it is 1.1 electron volt and see here we are having intrinsic Fermi level right and that is exactly somewhere in between conduction band and valence band. Now there are a few definitions that I want to explain you before that few more terms that you need to understand. Here you can observe we are having Fermi energy level. This Fermi energy level that we have it nearer to this valence band. Why the reason is here we are talking about P type substrate. If you have N type substrate then this Fermi energy level that will be nearer to conduction band. So for P type substrate Fermi energy level that will be nearer to valence band and Fermi energy level will be nearer to conduction band in case of N type substrate. Based on this, there are a few essential definitions that you need to understand. You see, here we can have Fermi potential phi F and into Q that will be energy, right? So, you see how much Fermi potential is there? So, that will be difference of energy divided by this charge. So, Fermi potential definition that should be clear to you. What is that you see? It is Fermi energy minus intrinsic energy divided by charge that is Fermi potential. Here if you observe Fermi energy is lower than intrinsic energy. So, this difference EF minus EI that will be negative. So, for P type substrate Fermi potential will be negative. See here Fermi potential phi F that is based on Fermi energy level and intrinsic energy level. It is EF minus EI by Q. So, this energy difference of Fermi energy that is that is EI minus EF but Fermi potential is phi F. So, that is EF minus EI divided by Q. Right. And for P type this will be negative. Why the reason is EI is greater than EF. Right. And as if you talk about Fermi potential for N type substrate, then here Fermi energy level will be there. So, for N type, this Fermi potential will be positive. Right. Now, as if you want to calculate this Fermi potential based on concentration, then Fermi potential for P type substrate that will be Kt by Q, that is thermal voltage, that even you can say. A is Boltzmann's constant, T is temperature in Kelvin, and Q is charge. So, Kt by Q into ln Ni by Na, where Ni is intrinsic concentration and Na is doping concentration of trivalent impurities. So, this is how we can calculate Fermi potential. If you observe value of Ni, so Ni value that is there in form of 1.45 into 10 to the power 10 per centimeter cube. But if you talk about value of an A, so that is there in order of 10 to the power 15 to 10 to the power 16. So, here you can say 10 to the power 10 divided by 10 to the power 15 and ln of that, that will be negative. So, that is what I have told you. Fermi potential of P-type substrate, that will be negative as per this. And based on this formula also, it will be negative. And Fermi potential for N-type semiconductor, if you want to calculate that, based on concentration, then it will be Kt by Q ln of Nt by Ni, where N is doping concentration of donor impurities, which are pentavalent impurities and Ni is intrinsic concentration, right. Here, see, we are having free space energy over here. And why I have located this free space energy? The reason is, I just want to explain you one more definition, that is electron affinity of given material. Sometimes there can be question based on calculate electron affinity. So, what is electron affinity? See, electron affinity, electron affinity that is energy gap in between conduction band and free space. So, you can say it is amount of energy required to make electron free from conduction band, right. So, electron affinity that is energy gap in between conduction energy band and free space. For this p-type substrate that is 4.15 electron volt and we can calculate that as per charge Q into sine. 
right that is how we can calculate it now i need to go out of this screen right now if you observe few more basics then see here work function that i have written over here so what is work function this definition is also very essential the work function is amount of energy required to move electron from fermi level to free space so there can be question based on calculation of work function so you should know what is work function it is amount of energy required to move electron from fermi energy level to free space so if you observe here that is q into phi s where phi s is work function potential right and q into phi s that is amount of energy of work function that is you see q into psi that is this much plus this is ec minus ef so this is ec minus ef now if you want further clarification regarding this then that could be you see q into psi that is electron affinity plus see this is half of eg by 2 plus q into phi f that is how also we can write this right so this q into psi s phi s that could be q into psi plus eg by 2 plus q into phi f that is how also we can calculate it right now let us try to understand energy band diagram so here first what i'll do is i'll be explaining you energy band diagram of mos capacitor so in mos capacitor we are having three layers which i have told you metal layer then sio2 layer and third one is semiconductor layer that could be of p type or n type so here to have this i just need to go out of the screen so here we have already discussed about uh, semiconductor layers uh, energy band diagram right all the definition that i have discussed over here now as if you talk about sio2 layer then you see sio2 layer that is having energy band diagram as per this sio2 is is insulating material right so if you observe energy band gap in between conduction band and valence band then that is 8 electron volt over here and electron affinity that is 0.95 for sio2 0.95 electron volt for sio2 right and as if you talk about energy band diagram of conductor or metal then you see for aluminium here we are having fermi energy and free space gap as per 4.1 electron volt now you might be thinking like why we have only fermi energy level over here see with metal fermi energy level conduction band energy level and valence band energy level all are overlapped over each other so with metal we just need to see fermi energy level only ec ef and ev all are overlapped over each other right so here work function for metal is how much that is simply a gap in between fermi to free space here there is no ec ef that you need to have over here right so this is how separate energy band diagram of this metal oxide and semiconductor that we can have now what i'll do is i'll be going to explain you how we can have energy band diagram in total when we diffuse this three layer and we make mos capacitor right so for that for that there are few basics that you need to understand first let me explain that see when we combine these three layers metal oxide and semiconductor at that time fermi level must be lined up in a single line so fermi energy level that must be lined up in a single line for all three materials that is condition number one and second is free space must be continuous free space must be continuous these two things that you need to take care of right so here you see work function difference in between semiconductor and metal is there and that will be leading to voltage drop across mos and there will be bending of bands so here there is a work function difference let me show you how it is there see i have explained you this right so in that if you observe work function of semiconductor 
सो दैट इज हाउ मच दिस क्यू इन टू साइन प्लस इजी बाई टू प्लस क्यू इन टू फाइव एंड दिस वैल्यू दिस वैल्यू दिस इज क्वाइट हायर कंपेयर टू दिस सो एज देर इज अ वर्क फंक्शन डिफरेंस देर विल बी देर विल बी वोल्टेज ड्रॉप अक्रॉस मॉ स्ट्रक्चर एंड हियर एज वी डिफ्यूज दिस मटीरियल्स टूगेदर देर विल बी बैंडिंग ऑफ बैंड सो हाउ बैंडिंग ऑफ बैंड इज देर लेट एस ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट फॉर दैट आई जस्ट नीड टू गो आउट ऑफ द स्क्रीन सो हियर सी एज आई हैव टोल्ड यू वेन यू कंबाइन दिस थ्री लेयर्स एट दैट टाइम फर्मी लेवल मस्ट बी लाइन अप इन अ सिंगल लाइन so you see i am just plotting for me energy level that is lined up for all three materials right it is lined up for all three materials like this now here if you observe see there is a bending in energy at semiconductor right here we are having semiconductor so there is a band now you have to be thinking like why there is a band over here you see there is a band in conduction intrinsic and there is a band in valence band and that band is happening in upward direction so see that is happening in upward direction the reason is if you observe fermi energy level over here with metal so that is happening over here but fermi energy level with semiconductor that is happening here so this energy is higher compared to this right so obviously to make this lower to have lined up ef this levels ev then ei and ec that will be having bending in upward direction right then only this fermi energy that can be lined up in a straight line right so when you fabricate these three layers together right like this at the time at the side of semiconductor there will be bending of energy as you can observe it over here why the reason is this work function that is that work function is 4.1 over here and this work function is higher over here with semiconductor so that is voltage drop as well as we need to have lined up fermi energy level for all three materials that's why there is a bending over here in semiconductor now when you talk about energy band diagram of oxide layer so in that there will be ram function you can observe there will be ram function now you might be thinking like why there is a ram function over here the reason is across oxide there will be uniform electric field and because of uniform electric field across oxide what will happen at the side of metal there will be lower potential and at the side of semiconductor there will be higher potential so uniformly voltage will vary in this direction that's why there is a ram function right and as i have told you free space must be continuous so you see free space that must be continuous so that is happening like this you can observe here free space is continuous like this so that is how combined mos structure energy band diagram that we can have over here right so that is how things are happening i hope you have understood all those things till anything that you would like to share please note it down in comment section i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video